this study is on the element copper. It's the first of several sessions that we're going to do on studies of elements. Uh, copper is an incredible element. It has a history dating back probably to 9000 BC, long time ago. And this is, uh, was discovered and worked essentially in the highlands of Iran, the Iranian area, also into uh, Mesopotamia, modern day Iraq, and even into Egypt. But up as late as 4000 BC, we have evidence that uh, uh, copper was even used in, uh, in Egypt in making uh, copper pipe. And copper got to Europe in about 2000 BC. So we have quite a history up to the present time. And it uh, initially was found in what's called native copper. Native copper means that it was not combined with any other elements. And native copper was uh, easy to use. Nowadays, we get copper out of what's called an ore. An ore is copper plus some other elements. But the, uh, the beginning was be uh, copper availability was because it was so easy to acquire. Gold was also an old element, but it was not so easy to acquire. When we study copper, the first thing we do is observe. We observe. That's the first thing. And in the observations, we can talk about the fact that it's a solid. Uh, we can talk about the fact that, uh, especially wire, it can it can bend with little pressure on it. We can talk about its color, it is maybe a red orange color. And it will vary depending upon the, the situation with the copper. It can be from a bright color to very dull. We can uh, also find out that it conducts electricity. These are all direct observations. And uh, of course, it can be drawn into thin wires. That's called ductile. It can be pounded into jewelry and pottery, malleable. And we can uh, extend our observations with instruments and we can calculate a mass. Remember, mass is one, it's called one of the base units or the base quantities, I should say, base quantities. And the base unit for mass is the gram or the, actually the kilogram. We can calculate its mass. Now the mass varies depending upon what size piece we have. Uh, that's sometimes called an extensive variable. That means it can vary depending upon quantity. So we can get the mass. And then we can... Uh, and this is fun to do, we can get the volume. If it's a regular object, we can calculate a uh, regular object volume equals length times width times height. Uh, or if it's a cylinder, the volume is like a piece of uh, pipe that's solid. Pi r squared is the base area times the height, the volume of the cylinder. But frequently, we get the volume using what's called water displacement. Water displacement, it's a great technique. What we do is we, uh, you'll see the uh, example over here, we get a graduated cylinder, number one, pour water in it, and we get the initial volume of the water, the initial volume. Remember, when we read a graduated cylinder, if you haven't had this already, the graduated cylinder will have, it will draw the water here. This is in the graduated cylinder. 
And when you look at it, you look at this point right there because it curves. It's called a meniscus. M-E-N-I-S-C-U-S. -E meniscus. We get the initial volume and then we put the object in. Insert object. Now you be careful. Uh, let's do this right. Let's spell insert. I-N-S-E-R-T. Insert the object very carefully so you don't break the cylinder. And make sure the object doesn't dissolve in water or you couldn't get it the volume and look at the reading this volume two insert object get volume two the final volume and the difference between the initial and final volume is the volume of the substance copper and you can get different samples now, when we do this, uh, we can do interesting things. The volume can vary according to uh, size of material. It's called an extensive variable also. We can take the mass and multiply by the volume. Or we can take the mass, add it to the volume. And uh, But we can do... When we take the mass and divide it by the volume, we find out that every time we do that, we get the same number. And if we're using grams per cubic centimeter, we come out with 8.9 grams per cubic centimeter. Now, let me digress here and say what a cubic centimeter is because we lock work with volume. I'm going to tell you right now that one milliliter of water is called one cubic centimeter. This is going from a volume unit to a, a length unit. So this is an important little identity. Identity. It's a great rectangle. Left equals right. So the uh, volume of the copper is the displaced water is also can be described in cubic centimeters. So we have a density. Now a density, you can take a whole handful of copper and a little bit of copper, and when you take the ratio of grams to cubic centimeters, you come out with always around 8.9. Now the, the density, therefore, we'll go back to this color, density, therefore, it's what's called an intensive variable. Intensive means it, regardless of the, the quantity of, of copper, the density will stay the same at that particular temperature, that room temperature, intensive variable. Density also can be described from the metric system is taking a base unit mass, a base unit, and we're dividing it by what's called a derived variable, derived unit volume, and when we divide these two out, we get a variable, which we call a derived variable. Now, why am I introducing this? Because when you work with variables, some of them you're going to read directly. They're going to be base units, the temperature, the mass, the uh, length, something like that. But when you take base units or base units and derived units and combine them, everything after that is something man-made. It's called a derived variable. So we're going to stop right there and we'll continue on with copper.